I would expect, uh, if I were out there writing a question, I were a defense lawyer, to say, well, what about the Borg Warner case in Texas, Krauss, where you practice? Um, the Texas Supreme Court says that in order for me to get to a jury, I have to provide defendant-specific evidence relating to the approximate dose to which the plaintiff was exposed, coupled with evidence that the dose was a substantial factor in causing the asbestos-related disease. And that'll suffice to get me to the jury. And uh, it is a very heavy burden. It's a burden that doesn't exist in any of the other 49 states. Now, while you can't do any sort of numerical estimate of these plaintiffs' lifetime exposure based on the qualitative descriptions that they give in their depositions, which, by the way, the Helsinki criteria document on causation in meso cases says is all you need. Uh, a description of exposure by the plaintiff is all the doctors need in the Helsinki criteria document in order to attribute exposure, not any sort of numerical exposure. But when we're confronted with this burden, what's a plaintiff supposed to do? Well, I'm not going to come with this sort of analysis um, because I don't think it can be done with no data. But now we do have a lot of exposure data. We have historic data. I mean, Balzer and Cooper and Marr measured what exposures took place. We know that when you cut and saw pipe covering, you get 1 to 20 fibers per cc. When you know when you rip it off of uh, uh, an IMO turbine, Joe, on the uh, USS Bainbridge or the Preble, that you get over 200 fibers per cc. Um, that's in a Navy document. We know that uh, grinding off an, uh, an asbestos gasket, contrary to uh, Jim's data, which is defense data, um, we know that if you apply uh, a, a, you know, a power grinder to a baked on gasket, you get, get levels up to 30 fibers per cc, one to 30 fibers per cc. You can take those point exposure data and you can apply them to the work practices the plaintiffs describe, and we know from uh, the presentations yesterday that using this broad correlation of exposure to cohorts, I would Subo and Rodelsberger found that meso occurred in cumulative doses as low as 0.15 fibers per cc. You know, 0.15 fibers per cc, what is it? Well, one fiber per cc is, um, uh, one fiber year is one fiber per cc for 2,000 hours. So 0.15 fibers per cc is one fiber per cc for 300 working hours, or 10 fibers per cc for 30 hours. Well, there are lots and lots of exposures that have been measured by your defendant's products that average or exceed 10 fibers per cc for the work practices that our plaintiffs are uh, describing. And so, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to then make an estimate of the number of times that my guy said, I, I repaired hundreds of crane valves while I was a machinist mate for five years, and it took me about a half hour each, and we've got a lot of data describing uh, what the levels were when you grind asbestos gaskets off a crane valve. You can come up with thresholds. You can get your expert to say that exposure would substantially contribute uh, to a, a baseline level of 0.15 fiber years, which the literature says increases your meso risk nearly 800%. Uh, that's what you can do uh, with some degree of reasonableness with the data we have in this litigation and nothing more. It's our view that what Jim and the defense hygienists do is, as Mort Korn said, not science. Thank you.